about the MMA OB Daily Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Adam Martin. I'll be taking guys through the latest in the world of MMA. Technically, it's actually Sunday today, but I'm not going to be here tomorrow, so I want to get the podcast done right now, and anyone who's watching will see it tomorrow morning. Uh, this is always scheduled for about 10 o'clock on Monday morning, so uh, it, it really is Sunday here, but the podcast will be taking place Monday. I apologize for my voice. I'm not feeling 100% right now, but I want to get through the podcast and I want to talk about UFC China. So uh, first and foremost, guys, follow me on Twitter at Adam Martin. This podcast, as always, is available at MMAOzbaker.com on our YouTube channel. Like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Also check me out at BJPen.com and MMARings.net. So uh, like I mentioned, you, the, the basis of today's show will probably be uh, mostly UFC China and then a few other pieces of news and fight announcements. But the big news of the weekend was, of course, UFC China. And it was actually a pretty good card from what I saw. There there was quite a few decisions, obviously, dragged on at times, but the main card definitely was a good card, and there was a lot of upsets, too. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start with the main event and work my way down here. Main event of the evening, Wee Li Zhang defeats Jessica Andrade in 42 seconds via TKO to become the new UFC Women's Strawweight Champion in what was absolutely a phenomenal performance by Zhang. Wow, I mean, I'm blown away. I think everyone's blown away. This was an incredible performance by Zhang here. When the fight was announced, a lot of people were kind of confused about this one. I think most people thought Suarez would get the title shot, maybe Watterson, and then they gave it to Zhang. And the more you dig into Zhang, the more you realize really how good of a fighter she is. But still, I wasn't convinced that she would beat Jessica Andrade. And she went out there and she destroyed her. It wasn't even close. Probably the the, uh, the most dominant anyone's been against Andrade in her whole career. She's never lost that quickly in the UFC. She did lose to Mary Renault via first round submission a couple of years ago, but that was a minute and 54. This was a 42 second knockout, and Zhang just absolutely destroyed her. Uh, Zhang caught Andrade to the clinch, started destroying her, her body with, with knees. She was throwing some nasty elbows and, and finished her quickly. So, an, an amazing performance by Zhang. She wins a, a performance of the night bonus, well deserved. You know, I'm not going to lie that when I first saw it, I did think there were some illegal back to the head shots with the elbows. I, I still think there are, but uh, the ref didn't call them, and and I think it was the knees really that, that did it. So I think there's some shots that you could have called back of the head, but at the same time, it went so quickly that I, I can't really blame the ref in this case that he, he might have missed them. So either way, Zhang wins the title. Andrade loses it, and for Zhang, I mean, that's 20 straight wins since losing her MMA debut in 2013. That's incredible. She's looked amazing in UFC 4 no now beat Daniel Taylor, beat Jessica Aguilar. That was the fight that really woke my eyes to how good this girl could be, that that uh, Jessica Aguilar fight. It was a brutal beatdown. Beats Torres, beats Andrade. She's been in the UFC for just over one year, and now she's a champion already. So that's absolutely incredible. Dana White says no one wants to fight her, but someone's going to have to. So I do think Tatiana Suarez is next. That's the fight that I believe will happen next. And that's a really tough fight, I think, for Zhang. But I think it's a fight, tough fight for Torres, too. We saw what happened with Suarez in the last against Ansarov. She got tired out as the fight went on. She started getting beat up on the field a little bit. If Jan can stop the takedowns, she's probably going to beat Suarez. But can she stop the takedowns? That's a hard thing to say. Uh, we all know that Suarez's takedown game at 115 is by far the best. So that's a very intriguing matchup. I like it a lot. I think it's the fight that makes sense. Some people will say maybe the winner of Watterson and Jan Jacek. You could do that fight. I think Jan Jacek would be a great match against Jang personally, but I think Suarez deserves the title shot next. Uh, as long as she wants it, I think she'll get it. And for Andrade, this was kind of a shocking loss. I was at her last fight against Roseanne Dunes when she, she slammed her and won the title. It was an incredible fight there. Um, I, I really thought she would win the title, or defend the title, I should say. Uh, I was very, very surprised she lost so quickly in this fight but hey this is mma these, these things happen and people lose all the time in mma especially in the first round by, by ko uh, it could happen at any weight class apparently I, I don't think many people thought this would happen at 115 but it did so Andrade will be back she's only 27 years old she's still pretty young she has a lot of experience but absolutely needs a couple wins now in a, a division that's very strong so unfortunately for Andrade, she won't be getting that It'd be in title shot. She didn't defend her belt at all, so I think that's okay. Uh, maybe a rematch with Rose. Maybe the winner of Joanna and Watterson. Not too sure who's next for Jessica Andrade, but either way, she's still one of the best fighters in that division. She just got caught on uh, Saturday morning, and Zhang was the victor. So incredible performance by Weili Zhang. I'm going to pull the odds out here. It definitely was underdog. just can't remember how big of a dog. Plus 
170. So a decent size underdog. And I do want to mention those props there. Zhang by Nako plus 625. Zhang round one plus 1200. So those cash are some lucky people. Not for me. I thought draws would win. It is what it is. Next up, co-main event. This was another surprising upset. Wow, I mean, incredible forms here by Li Jing Liang. Knocks out Elijah Zaleski to Sanchez in the third round with strikes. Wow. I mean, this was a really just incredible performance by Li Jing Liang. These Chinese fighters really stepped it up in front of their uh, home country men and, and women. Amazing performance here by Li Jing Liang. He didn't even make, make this a competitive fight. He just destroyed Elijah Zaleski Sanchez from the opening bell. The Sanchez had nothing for Jing, uh, Jing Liang. He didn't do anything. Jing Liang moved really well around the cage. He landed good strikes and just tired out Dos Santos and then finished him with nine seconds left by knockout. So that was an incredible performance. Li Jing Liang has a nine and two record in the UFC. That's amazing. So good for him. Nine and three record, excuse me, but still amazing record. Uh, he has uh, seven knockouts. Is that right? Set six knockouts. That's incredible too. I mean, he's a guy that not many people, I think, thought was going to have this kind of career. And he, he's had a great career in the UFC. So good for Li Jing Liang. He wins a performance of the night bonus. Takes out Zaleski DeSantos, a top 15 fighter. And for DeSantos, very disappointing loss here. He was on a seven-fight win streak. He, a lot of people were talking about him as the next contender at 170. And he loses to a guy like Jing Liang by knockout. That's that's a tough one. But that was his first knockout loss of his career. He has been submitted a few times. But as far as knockouts go, the first one of his career. So unfortunate knockout loss here for DeSantos. He's 30 years old. So... He's going to have to bounce back quick in a division that's stacked as 170 if he wants to remain a top contender. But for now, J uh, Jing Liang takes the cake here, and man, what a knockout. So good for him. Jing Liang wins. He was a plus 215 underdog. And the prop on him by knockout, plus 500, but the prop him round three, plus 2,075. So again, someone lucky got uh, some money on there probably. I didn't expect him to win this fight. I don't think many people did. I'm blown away by Jing Liang's performance. I've actually liked him for a while, and I picked him in a bunch of fights, but not in this one, and I was wrong. Uh, amazing performance by Jing Liang. He actually has won five of his last six fights, have earned him either fight of the night or performance of the night. So this guy's making bank and definitely one of the best Chinese fighters in the world. For the for the for for a while, he was the best. I think, obviously, Zhang has surpassed him as the best Chinese fighter in the world, but male Chinese fighter, Jing Liang Li is the best guy right now. Next up, flyweight fight. Kai Kara France defeats Mark De La Rosa of the unanimous decision. Really solid performance here by Kara France. Not only did his striking look good, but his, his grapp grappling looked really good too. Good takedown defense in this fight. Gets the job done. He's on a eight-fight win streak right now. Really good performance. De La Rosa's two and three now in the UFC. He's probably going to be released, I'd assume. But, man, good for Kara France. And you talk about top contenders at 125. He's right there. 26 years old. He's got a good personality. He's got a lot of experience fighting. I'm a big fan of this guy. I like him a lot. And after the fight, he called out Alexander Petoja for a rematch. I think that's an amazing fight. They fought in the ultimate fighter. Petoja uh, won the fight by decision. But since then, Care France has looked unbelievable. I think he'd be that'd be a great fight. Great call out. Love to see that matchup. I think it could be a fight in the night as well. So that's a great fight, in my opinion. And the UFC definitely should book Kai Care France versus Alexander Petoja, the rematch. Next up, we had a welterweight battle between Song Ken and Derek Grant. Another really good fight here. Uh, just a just a lot of strikes being thrown by these two guys. And Kenan wins the unanimous decision. A lot of people thought Krantz won, but again, it was in China. You knew it was going to be close in the, the scorecards if it went there, and Kenan gets the job done. So good for Kenan. He's 3-1 and one now in the UFC. He's looked really good in the UFC. This was a good fight. One of the front runners, I think, for Friday night, but didn't get the job, but didn't get the uh, the bonus, but he got the job done. So good for him. And for Derek Krantz, two straight losses now, but both good fights. So I think he might get another fight. Uh, definitely needs to win his next one, though. I mean, and this was a fight that I think the UFC thought he'd probably win, but either way, Kenny gets the job done. Good for him. Next up, catch weight bout. Mizuki Inoue defeats Wu Yang via split decision 29 28, 28 29, 29 28. Good for Inoue. Her UFC debut successful. Only 25 years old. She's been around a while now. Very impressive young fighter here. She's 6-1 over the last seven fights. The one lost to Jander Roba, who is also in the UFC. She's definitely a good fighter. Uh, 115 would be best for her. She did take this fight at 125 to get into the UFC. Good for her, but back to 125 at some point. And I think she'll have a pretty good career in the UFC. There's a lot of fighters I think she can beat in that division. And, uh, excuse me, that was a good start for her UFC career. Going to the prelims, we had Anthony Hernandez defeat Jung Young. 
Jung Young Park via second round and a corner choke. Good for Hernandez. He needed this win. Uh, wasn't the easiest fight for him, but he gets the job done via second round submission. So Hernandez get, gets the win there. Uh, next up, Bantamweight bout, Sue Mudarji picks up an upset win over Andre Sukumta. And I told people on the podcast, and I should have listened to myself here, but man, Sukumta is just a guy you don't trust with your money. And Mudarji, honestly, was probably a good bet at plus money. He gets the job done here. Uh, and it wasn't even a close fight. Look at the scorecards here. 326, 326, 325. So just a, a, a very one-sided fight here for Mudarji. Good for him. Next up, Dian Jung defeats Caddis Ibrahimov in the third round. Guillotine, standing guillotine. I mean, wow. Very, great performance over Dan Jung. This guy is someone to watch out for at 205. A uh, lot of finishing skills at both on the feet and on the ground. Very impressive fighter. So I, I definitely keep my eye on this guy. Again, Imber Gamov, I knew he took the first round notice, and I, I should have listened to myself, trusted my gun this one. I thought Jung had a good chance. Didn't listen to myself. It is what it is. My picks were not great, um, but I think a lot of people struggle on this card. There's a lot of upsets and a lot of fights that honestly feature fighters that Let's, let's be real here, guys. We didn't know too much about So it is what it is. Not the greatest card, but we move on to September. And there's, I think, four cards this month. So I'll get back on the boat. But uh, as far as this fight goes, yes, Jung wins. And I should listen to my gut on this one because I thought he had a good chance. Next up is Magulov. Demir Magulov defeats Tiago Moises via unanimous decision. Uh, exactly how, how I thought the fight would go. Is Magulov is very good at controlling range. He's good at controlling the fight anywhere it goes. 19-1 record now. So definitely a solid fighter. I'd like to see him get a finish. All three of his wins in the UFC by, by decision, but definitely a, a good fighter. Next up, Keely Alatang defeats Dana Batchergol via unanimous decision, and he they both win fight of the night for this fight. Obviously, a back and forth fight. Alatang gets the decision here, but a close fight for sure. And I, I'm assuming both guys will get another fight in the UFC, considering they just won fight of the night. I'm sure the UFC matchmakers were impressed by that. And finally, opening up the card, Caroline Rose defeats Laura Procopio via split decision. 28, 29, 30, 27, 29, 28. So good for Caroline Rose. Uh, gets the job done there. And she, uh, no, she wasn't an underdog. It was uh, it was basically a pick em. So we had a couple underdogs win, though. Dan Jung plus 245. Uh, and then the two main fights, Jing Liang plus 215 and Zhang plus 170. So a couple underdogs won. But still, I think overall, and Mujarji plus 140. Overall, I think it was a pretty difficult fight, to, difficult fight card to pick. There was a lot of upsets, like I mentioned, four out of eleven. That's pretty. That's a pretty high ratio, and just a lot of fights that didn't go the way someone's thought. But either way, you know the people that did pick Jang or, or Jingli, I didn't see anyone pick Jingli, but the people that picked Jang, good, good job on that one. You know, I, I thought it was going to be a bit soon, but she looked amazing. And uh, overall, the card probably was a little bit better than the most of us thought, but unfortunately, it was just at a bad time for most North Americans. So it is what it is. We move on to next week, and that would be UFC 242. <clears throat> Taking place Saturday in Abu Dhabi. Have you never made up against Dustin Poirier? I'll be back Tuesday with Cole Shaw and breaking down that entire card. And I can't wait to talk about that card. That's a sick card. Looking forward to that. Uh, a couple pieces of news before I get out of here. Uh, let's start with this one. And Bibner Magomedov, he was in the news. He was interviewed. There's a long interview there with Brad Okamoto the ESPN. And, and he says he wants to fight GSP. That's a dream fight for him. And he'd like to fight in Montreal. So I don't know if this fight will happen, but personally, as a fan of the sport, I'd love to see this fight happen. You have arguably the most dominant wrestler of all time at 155 against the most dominant wrestler ever at 170 and partly at 185. So great fight. It'd be a dream fight for fans. I just don't see it happening because I just see the UFC being a little worried that just say GSP beats Habib, uh, that he wouldn't stay and defend his belt. just like he did against Bisping. So that's what I think the worry is for the UFC. And that's why I don't think the fight happens. They just can't take the risk that Habib's going to lose. And then they'll have no champion, but it'd be definitely a good fight if it happened. Uh, Paulo Costa, he's been recommended by the California State Athletic Commission to move up to 205, along with a number of, number of other fighters in that card last week or two weeks ago in UFC 241. But his manager, Walid Ismail, says he will not be moving up. He will be staying at 185. Uh, I think at some point this guy might grow out of his frame, but if he can make the weight and his manager says he can do it, we'll see. So far, so good. I don't think he's missed weight yet, but. It's, it's a big weight cut for him, no doubt about it. The guy's very strong, very muscular. So we'll see what happens there. Frank Mears in the news, he talked about the fight with Roy Nelson. He says he doesn't want to fight Roy again. He doesn't like how Bellator booked this fight. He's like, he said that uh, they're friends. They train together in Vegas. He doesn't want to fight him, but Bellator's like, this is the fight we have for you. So Frank Mears, if you read the article and the quotes, he's like, this fight's going to be boring, guys. 
we don't match up good. We fought before. It wasn't a good fight. I told my friends this is going to be a boring fight. Who wants to hear that? I mean, really, he's being honest. Like, it's gonna, it's not going to be a good fight. Mir's just going to try taking Roy down, hold him there, and and Nelson's going to try and knock out Mir. But I think, based on the first fight, we saw how much success Mir did have with the wrestling. It could go different this time. Mir's obviously not the guy he once was. Even the guy he was in 2011, he's just looked really bad lately. But at the same time, Roy's not look great either. So I don't like this fight as a main event. I don't hate the matchup in general. Maybe it's going to be a little better than Frank thinks. But if one half of the fight says this fight's going to suck, it's probably going to suck. So I'm a little surprised Bellator was so adamant in booking it when one half of the fight was like, I don't want to do this fight. We'll see what happens. But I think that's a very weak main event for Bellator. And when you're when the one half of the fight says, I think this fight's going to be boring, that definitely has to worry you as a fan. A couple fight now that I'm going to get out of here, guys. There's a really good fight at UFC Sao Paulo. Francisco Trinaldo against Bobby Green. And I'm surprised this fight's happening. Not because it's, it's a fight that makes sense, but Bobby Green was retired, and he's coming back to fight Francisco Trinaldo. So that's a little surprising. I guess it's a good chance for Bobby Green to get back at least near the top 15. So let's talk about these guys. Bobby Green, 32 years old. He has a 24-9-1 record. He did fight last December against Dracar Close, lost the decision. Overall, Bobby Green is 5-4-1, one, one draw in the UFC. Uh, yeah, he started off his UFC career with four straight wins. He looked amazing, and then since then, he's really struggled. But he's fought really high-level guys for the most part. So you got to give him a little bit of a pass. Uh, Bobby Green, solid fighter, good boxing for sure. Takes on Trinaldo here, 41 years old. Trinaldo's coming off a loss to Alexander Hernandez in an awful fight. Before that, he haven't done it by knockout. This is a tough fight to call. <coughs> Does take place in Brazil. So you have to give Charles some sort of a advantage there. But Bobby Green matches up, I think, pretty well, Charles. As long as he keeps his fight the feet, it's a good chance to outbox Ronaldo. It's a fight that I think can go either way. Um, I kind of lean towards Green. I mean, nine years younger. You gotta you gotta keep that in mind. And yes, he did retire, but the retirement didn't last very long. Let's just say that. So I think Bobby Green has a really good chance to win this fight. We'll see what happens as far as the odds go. And you know, with the fight even happened, let's let's be fair here. Bobby Green's pulled out quite a few fights. Like the guy a lot. Great guy. Awesome dude. I remember having on the Party Shot podcast, I think five years ago after he beat, uh, who was it? James Krause with that controversial knock, knocked out uh, with the kick to the body or to the groin, whatever you believe it was. But I remember having him on the podcast. He was great. And uh, I've been a fan of him for a while. Uh, it's nice to see him back. He's a really good fighter. And we'll see what happens. But uh yeah, anytime a guy retires, you have to question how they're gonna return. And the one last thing I wanted to mention was Chase Hooper, who was on the contender series last year. He's he was on a developmental deal. He's a young guy. I'm gonna pull his record up. 8 0 1 record. He's only 19 years old. He's very young. Since that show, uh he's two and zero and one. And he beat Luis Gomez at Titan FC in June. And another guy in Island Fight. So he's been fighting on a fight pass and he's been looking good now he's making his ufc debut ufc 145 245 excuse me we don't know who's gonna be fighting i'm assuming another young guy i do think this guy's pretty good he's a featherweight six foot one he's only 19 years old he's a big dude young got good potential in the sport but uh race to be seen will be fighting but yes that ufc 245 245 card man it's gonna look good and uh i really hope they do announce that john jones Jan blachowicz fight which seems to be rumored and also the Nate diaz Corey masville fight so that's a good card once again guys apologize for my voice i'm really not feeling that great today but uh, i had to do the podcast as always want to talk about ufc china uh overall like i said a, a better card than i think a lot of it's expected but uh Definitely the, the main event and the co-main event were the highlights of it. So, guys, once again, thanks for joining me at MM Adam Martin. It is Sunday, but this podcast will be airing Monday morning. So, if Monday morning, I hope you guys have a great week week of work and also a great September. I mean, August is over. It's kind of crazy how fast this summer's gone by, but now we're in September. The fall is coming up very shortly. Uh, follow, me on MM, follow me on Twitter at MM Adam Martin. This podcast is available at MAOlTwitter.com. Also, check me out at BJPen.com, MARings.net. Guys, have a great long weekend. Um, great when you're watching this, I'll be at the cottage uh, enjoying myself. So uh, have a great long weekend, guys, and I'll be back soon talking about more in the world of MMA. Uh, when once again, I apologize for my voice. I'm just not feeling the greatest today. So have a good one, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. <clears throat> oh, man.